This is for the Ethics Review class at Parker University. The tenth of the Licensing Board's Rules are Regulations of Prepaid Plants. Sometimes chiropractors will negotiate with the patients to pay in advance for a treatment plant. The states have recognized that a number of complaints come out of these plans, and because they see a number of complaints coming out of these plans, they have adopted regulations to apply to them. Because the experiences have been different from state to state, I think again, like some of the other rules, you see a lot of variation between the states about what's required and what's not required. The rule in Texas is fairly innocuous if the plan is a fair plan designed to treat the patient fairly and without misleading the patient. The first requirement for these plans in Texas is they must be cancelable by either party without penalty. That means if the doctor or the patient transfers the plan, the patient needs to receive an appropriate refund, not a be subjected to a penalty where the refund is somewhat less than what they should be receiving. And I think the history in Texas is that many complaints about these prepaid treatment plans originated when it became necessary for the patient to cancel a plan. Perhaps they moved away. Perhaps they experienced a job transfer. Uh, perhaps they just didn't like going to the chiropractor, that particular chiropractor. Whatever the reason, the patient needs to be able to cancel the plan and receive a refund. And many of the complaints happen because the doctors either refuse to provide a refund or they provided a refund only after imposing some sort of penalty. So for example, the plan may have been based on a fee per visit that was somewhat less than the regular fee and the doctors would go back and increase the charge to the regular fee instead of just doing a pro rata refund of what, what was left on the plan. Uh, Texas board also requires that the plan provide for a limited defined number of visits. So it shouldn't be just an unlimited, as much care as you need for the year. It needs to be for an appropriate number of visits and it needs to include a proposed treatment plan and not just be an open-ended, come receive a chiropractic adjustment whenever you feel like it. The contract with the patient must specify the condition uh, that the treatment plan is addressing. It cannot be just a generic, uh, uh, no particular reason. Uh, if nothing else, it should specify a subluxation or a particular location for subluxation and be addressed to that. If there's going to be extra charges uh, for things like nutritional products, hard goods, x-rays or other things that are not included within that prepaid plan, that needs to be disclosed to the patient so it doesn't become a surprise later on. The patient needs to be aware that they, uh, 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 you know, what the charges are that they can expect. That's the whole point that they went into a prepaid treatment plan is they wanted to have a predictable amount of what they're going to have to pay for chiropractic care. The other thing to keep in mind about prepaid treatment plans is if it's not structured carefully, the doctor providing the prepaid treatment plan may be essentially acting as an insurance company. And of course, if they're not qualified to be an insurance company, they're violating the Texas Insurance Code. So be very careful that the plans are designed in a way that does not violate the insurance code. Be very careful that patients are treated fairly by the way, some of the rules in other states are somewhat more intrusive. Uh, there's even a few states that require that the prepayments be kept in a separate trust account. That's not required in Texas, but I think it's a good idea anyway to keep the prepayments in a separate account until that money has been earned. The doctor has provided the services and earned the money for to, to uh, remove it from that special account. And that helps prevent the doctor from spending the money before they've earned it. Makes it a little less painful when the doctor has to write a refund check because the money was not something they've already spent. I don't recommend prepaid treatment plans. I know a lot of doctors use them. I do strongly suggest that if you use prepaid treatment plans, you use them very carefully 
to avoid complaints and to treat your patients fairly.